take a look at our tree and see how it's starting to shape up. So we're starting to get um, this effect of this tree kind of growing up through him. You may want to fill some of this area here with some, uh, some more boulders and things like that. Let's go back to a bit of a sharper fall off on there. Get some of these little roots. Build in some more roots to fill in those gaps. That'll do, and then what we're going to do is come back up to this top and grab the flatten brush here. Again, great tool for a lot of the the, uh, the rock structures and things like that. And we can start to kind of flatten in these areas up in here a bit. Just kind of chisel this back a little bit here. Use that in conjunction with scrape to get these kind of nice chiseled or chipped kind of effects. Switch to scrape here. And then if we grab our pinch tool, I should point out something something that, a uh, little tip, when at whatever tray you're in, your number keys are going to be the hot key for the number of those trays, starting at one on the left. So if I hit my one key, uh, I'm in my sculpt, two for smooth, three for grab, four for pinch. If I jump in paint tools, same idea, one for the paintbrush, two for projection, and so forth. You can also define all of those hot keys um, up here in the hot key wi underneath windows. You can go in and, and define these hot keys. And of course, the defaults there as well, Mudbox, Max, Soft Image, and Maya. Uh, I'm using the Maya hot keys here. Use whatever one you're comfortable with. It'll set those uh, defaults, and you can customize them and change them to whatever you you want to work with there. So let's go back to, we were going to work with our pinch on here and start to define those edges. So the way the pinch uh, tool works is the greater the size of the brush, the greater the area I'm going to affect in pulling together to pinch. So with this here, I don't want to have too large of a brush. You can see the overall effect right there. Zoom in a bit. You can see how much I'm pinching there. I don't want to affect that area that much. I just want to define these edges a little bit. Nothing too dramatic. We'll just kind of get this kind of sharpened kind of feature here. And then any of these roots that I worked with, you know, maybe if they're a little bit too kind of rounded or bold, we can pinch them in a little bit as well. So there, we're going to leave him a little bit like this here and move over to our grab brush and take a look at some some ways we can use this tool. As I said, it's an excellent way for just quickly moving vertices. The fall off has a great effect on the grab brush um, as well. So the default kind of half smooth fall off will give you some nice overall effects in there. Um, we can use this to actually just start to kind of deform or move that geometry. I'm going to show you a really interesting thing with the grab brush here. A lot of people don't seem to be aware of the fact that the grab brush can work um, as a tool to grab these vertices and push and pull them to distort uh, your overall surface that you're working with. But it can also work as kind of a an overall force field, if you will, if you think of it that way. If I take my grab brush, let's, let's use this blunt kind of fall off here, and if I click outside in the space here, if I just click on my geometry, you'll see the result I get. I can do this these great big bold fall off things, but if I click in my screen space and then move towards I can affect that geometry wholly as well. And then I've grabbed it and I'm now pulling it. So that you can see the effect we're getting on the edge, a little bit too sharp along that side there. So I'm going to switch back to my other fall off. I mentioned this in the, the first videos here. All that is is basically that blunt fall off. And I've adjusted, you can customize all your fall off and store that to your, your fall off um, tray. I've just taken the blunt one and added a little bit of a dip on the end so we don't get as a blunt of a um, fall off there. So we can start to get, see we don't get those edges in there now. So now what can we do with this? Well let's start to distort this tree here a little bit. So um, if I make the brush nice and big I can start to grab components of it but I can start to dent this tree in a little bit. Maybe go with something like that. And I can start to distort this this tree a little bit. So we're not following exactly what the base mesh is giving us. So we can play with this a bit and um, distort it quite a bit. So using that screen space kind of method there, you can see that we're 
able to affect the geometry um, quite differently than just grabbing it overall. Um, I'm going to just grab some of this and I'm going to kind of push it around a little bit. I'm just doing this from my view. Um, so you can see I'm kind of reaching in to different depth. The fall off will give you a much um, different effect here as well. The fall off I'm using is giving me what I want to do with this and that's just distort this overall tree structure here. Just kind of gnarl it up a little bit. That's fine. And then maybe on the top here we might want to um, work with, let's bring this up a little bit. Just open that up a little bit there too. Twist this around a little bit. So I'm just distorting the surface a little bit, breaking it up a little bit, give it a little more of an interesting silhouette to that tree. And then we can see on the top it's a little bit too smooth up there, so let's go back to our wax and really start to, I'm going to use the bold fall off there again, just kind of start to define that up, break that surface up a bit. You know, maybe we have some of these kind of bulge up along the the top of it there and start to invert some of that around the edge. We'll just break that up. And then another thing that we can do to break this up a little bit more, either use the grab brush and start pulling it down or the inverse of the wax just to kind of pull some of the surface in a little bit, jagged it up, make it a little bit jaggy. There we go. And we'll carve a little bit of this out in here. Smoothen that up a little bit. There we go. That'll That'll give us kind of a, a bit of an effect on our top of our tree there anyways. This old stump kind of feel here. And we can con keep continuing with that. Um, keep working with this to define that in a little bit more. What we're going to do in the next video um, is jump ahead and instead of, in the interest of time here again, instead of continuing with these same techniques and effects, we're going to uh, jump ahead to working with some more of the structure here. We want to work with this head, get some uh, definition of that head, make it more skull-like. So let's jump to the next one and we'll work that root into his head there as well.